Salaric has got to be one of my favorite vegetables. And for this recipe, I'm gonna show you how to make a lovely soup. So this is what it looks like here. It's known as the ugly duckling of vegetables, but I think it's beautiful. It's so versatile. You know, uh, you can make a coleslaw from it, which is called a salaric remoulade. I'm gonna make a lovely soup now in a moment, and it is just so full of flavor. So this is my latest book. So it's midweek meals, and it's simple recipes for every easy day eating. So it is. Um, this recipe is taken from the one pot dinners, and I'll just show you the picture of it. So it's a salaric and potato soup with smoked bacon. So that's it there. So it's very, very simple. You can make it ahead, you can freeze it. Uh, 100 recipes, as I say, and what's different to this book here is that we've given you the little prep time. So 20 minutes prep, 25 minutes. So from start to finish, it gives you, it breaks it down, which you can freeze and all that. So I hope you enjoy this book. There's lots of lovely uh, recipes in it. We have a low and slow chapter, which is using a slow cooker, supermarket sweep, and then the one pan dinners. And all the recipes are here, so they are. So you can just see the whole contents, the one pan dinners low and slow the store cupboards bare how often do we hear that so i hope you enjoy this i think it's a lovely book and i think it's really really quick delicious recipes so this is the soup in it um as i say i love salaric so we're going to start off i'm going to show you how to prep the salaric now i'm putting some celery into this too so about two sticks of celery one small onion a couple of cloves of garlic and then i'm going to use this lovely smoked streaky rasher so we're looking for the board be a quality mark. This is with dry cured whiskey smoked, so it gives a lovely flavor to it. This now you can make this vegetarian by leaving obviously out the smoked bacon and using a vegetable stock. I'm using some chicken stock for this, so it's very very simple. We'll crush the garlic in a minute. Uh, I'm just going to get this on cook, and then I'm going to show you how to prep the salaric. So I'm going to use some nice rapeseed oil, good high temperature. Okay, so you can see the way it's smoking, and that's the beautiful thing about rapeseed oil. I'm going to put in a couple of little pieces of butter. So two little pieces of butter, that's gonna melt. And then, so two large sticks of celery, one small onion, and then we have our bacon, and this is all gonna go in here. So we're gonna get that on sizzling, first of all. Give it a little stir. Now, I'm gonna just crush my garlic, two cloves of garlic, just peel it. I'm using my little crusher here. So literally just put pressure on it like that. So we'll work the two cloves of garlic here. And this is a great little job because it saves in the wash up. So just scoop that then into the saucepan. So I'm not looking to get a huge amount of color, but I am looking to get lots of flavor in there. And the butter and the rapeseed oil, as you know, is oh, the way I use it a lot, so it is. Now we'll do the salaric in a minute. We'll just give this a little stir. So you can just do this with salaric or celery if you want to, but I think using both of them, it gives so much flavor, so it does. So I'll just let that cook up there, turn up the heat a little bit, and then we'll add in the potatoes. So that's one large potato, which I've just simply cubed, and I'll just drain that, and I'll put that in there. I find if I add the potatoes now, they always begin to catch and stick at the bottom. So there's no flour in this, it's gluten-free, and it's really, really tasty. So the other half of the salaric, you're probably wondering, where did it go to? So that, that's what the full salaric looks like. I just got this just in my local uh, Dunn stores and it's a root vegetable full of flavor. Uh, I'm going to show you how to prep it. So the other half is in the soup that I've already made because it does take about 20 to 25 minutes to actually cook this soup through. So I'm going to show you how to prepare this now. So what we're going to do is just literally just get all my trim. I'll just use this plate. This is a good tip for you. So this is the hardest part here. Just literally at the very end, just simply trimming that. Now you can use a potato peeler, but I think using it by hand peen it like that and using your small little paring knife here which makes it a little bit easier so just the root of it there you just literally peel that off and this is gorgeous like we uh, make a puree from it which is really good with steak and fish it really is beautiful so what we do is we steam it then we cook it with some butter and we also finish it with um, a little bit of uh, cream too so that's one piece there now for the next and then just literally just peel it. So just don't take your eyes off it. So you don't want to use, it's kind of like peeling a turnip. That's exactly what it's like. But it is a beautiful flavor. It's actually one of my favorite vegetables and it's so versatile. We actually smoke it and we barbecue it and we serve it in the restaurant. We turn it into a coleslaw, which is called a salaric remoulade. So we cut this into small little strips. And then what we do is we uh, cook it in boiling water for about maybe a minute or less. We run it through a Japanese mandolin first. And then what we do is we, uh, launch it off cool it down cold water press it out and then what we do is we literally just put um, mayonnaise grated apple and a little bit of whole grain mustard and some herbs and, and, and that's it so this is what it looks like there and if you make potato gratin you can put regular potatoes sliced salaric 
and you can put also um, half milk, half cream nutmeg. So it really is super versatile. I love sometimes like when I go shopping, people bring you up different vegetables and uh, they probably, they ask you, what is this? I had a man recently come up to me and he didn't know what a salaric was and I was telling him what to do with it and he was chuffed. So I hope he, I hope he made this soup. I, I, I told him that this soup that I'm making now is one of my favorites. So I'm cutting it quite big. It, just the bigger you cut it, the longer it takes to cook. So using the knife, then just scoop this in. We're not looking really to brown it off. We're just looking to get the whole kind of cooking process going. And then the same for this here. So using the big knife, put pressure on it. And that's why like this little rubber mat is really important. If you see that, just stops the board from moving and gives you a little bit of grip there. Can you see that? So that's part of my cookware range and it just stops it from moving so it is. So bamboo is a really good wood because it um, it's soft on the knives and it won't blunt in your knives. Okay, so just to recap what I have in the pot, we have salaric and celery. We have some onion. We have some smoked bacon. I'm gonna put in some lovely thyme now and uh, some rapeseed oil and some butter and some garlic. Uh, garlic is optional. I think it works really well in the soup. You can never get enough garlic in. And like this soup, you can freeze it. It'll keep for about maybe five, six days in your fridge. You can see as I'm chopping and never looking at camera, I'm always looking at what I'm doing in case you cut yourself. Okay, I'm gonna turn my other soup on here. We've already cooked that, so I'll finish that in a few minutes. We're nearly there. So it's very economical, like out of half a salaric, this is what I've got here. So I'll just give you a little look here. I might put a little bit more oil. So I'm using the rapeseed oil, so that's it there. So I'm counting loud, really, really nice oil. And then just give that a little stir. Now into this, one of the lovely herbs I like to use is some lovely fresh thyme. And just literally pick that. What I do is just get the little stalks and kind of just pick this off, run this into. And see the little stalks there, keep that for your, if you're making stock, like don't freeze it. Even if you're roasting a chicken, put that into the cavity of the chicken. It really is so gorgeous. You know, I don't like waste. It's not because I'm from Cavan either. Uh, so listen, we're gonna just scoop this out. Just pick that off and fresh thyme is delicious. You could use rosemary, rosemary might be a little bit too strong. I think fresh thyme is just so gorgeous. Now, for our liquids. So I'm happy with that. Started the cooking process. We're gonna use apple juice and it works really, really well. Nearly forgot my potatoes. I'm just gonna strain them. So that's one large rooster potato that I've used. Cut them into uh, large chunks. And that's gonna give a lovely kind of a body and a richness to the soup. And you won't need to add any flour to it. So I'll just give that a wee stir, I'll just show you that. Try and pick a nice deep saucepan. So what really works well with celery is apple juice. So this is from Wexford here. So there's no added sugar. It's a very, very natural product. So we're just gonna put in about half a pint of apple juice in here. Very accurately measured. <laughs> Mel is laughing at me. So that's gone in there, okay? And we're gonna bring that to the boil and then we're gonna add in some chicken stock. Now, if you want this vegetarian, you use some vegetable stock and you leave out the smoked bacon. So that's about two pints of stock goes in here. And literally all you do is you bring it to the boil and you let it simmer. So from this to this. So this is what I cooked earlier on. I'm gonna get a small knife and I'm gonna show you what I'm looking for. So with the potatoes and all that, they kind of look very similar, don't they? But it's the celery that really takes. So that's totally cooked through. So you see the celery stick, you see the celery, it's all cooked there. Now, I'm gonna put in um, some milk and cream, half and half is what I use. You can just use cream if you want to. So that's roughly about a quarter pint of each. And I'm using the full fat milk, as you do. A little bit of salt, and then we're gonna blend this. So you bring it to the boil, just to recap, put the lid on it, just like I've done there, bring it to the boil and let that simmer away. And that will honestly take a good 20, 25 minutes. And that really depends uh, on how um, big you've cut the celeric. So I just wanna show you just before I blend it, that's the lovely thyme kind of floating to the top. The smoked bacon is there somewhere, hiding down there. You have the onion, you have the garlic, exact same recipe, there's the bacon there. So it's cut into lovely little kind of like lardons, we call that, small little strips of bacon. The best way to blend it is using a hand blender. And I'm gonna show you this here. So this is my little trivet. So anything that comes out hot of the oven, whether you're using a casserole or a pot, if I put a pot onto my board here, I'm gonna actually really damage the board. So this is really clever. It doesn't take up much room. Okay, it's part of my cookware collection. 
and then what we do is just bring this over here and then we're going to hand blend this so it's going to be a little bit noisy excuse that so you get a nice bit of texture I can smell that lovely apple and you know what I might do just to show you a little tip when you're blending a lot of soup like this I might just take a little bit out and I can blend the rest after the video I'll just take a little bit out here so I want to get it nice and smooth so the longer you blend the smoother it gets look at even at that there now you can actually eat it like that as so you start it okay so just move that there now let's blend again so it just gives you a little bit more room go right down to the bottom So any stick blender will work. This is called a Bamix, it's a really good blender. Something we use in the cookery school and in the restaurant too. And that's it. I'm just gonna show you the, the texture of it and then we're gonna serve it up. So you have this lovely kind of like velvety soup. And I, I personally think, I can smell the apple juice, I can smell the smoked bacon, but I definitely think the cream and the milk is important for me. You know me and the cream. So we're gonna serve this with a little bit of wheat and bread. This is our wheat and bread that we make in the restaurant. And just to garnish this, so I'm just gonna put in a couple of ladlefuls in here. We're gonna garnish it with a little bit of crispy bacon. Very, very simple. It's delicious. It's not a, not a heavy soup at all. Okay, and if you don't want to use the cream, you can just use milk. And I've used obviously the um, the full fat milk. Okay, some croutons, some smoked bacon. So just before I started the video, I just grilled a little bit of that smoky bacon. We're just gonna literally sprinkle that there and that will give a lovely texture to the soup. Just kind of put that on top. Some croutons, how do you make croutons? This is some leftover sourdough, cut into strips, toss with a little bit of oil. And then what I like to put into this then is just little um, a little bit of sea salt. And, and that's it. A little bit of flat leaf parsley just to finish it just gives lovely freshness just literally tear it sprinkle it over and then a tiny little drizzle of rapeseed oil and that my friends is a really really quick recipe it's from my new book <laughs> should i say midweek meals and uh, as i say it's very very quick this can freeze you can make it ahead keep it in the fridge warm it up bring it in a flask enjoy this recipe and happy cooking and enjoy the book thanks a million